Oh, check it out. That is Old Red's big brother. Oh my goodness, that is a beautiful machine. Wow. So that is a Caterpillar number six shovel. As you can see, it says it here. It says number six there. This is a track loader and one of the first ones that Caterpillar made on their own. Before 1950s, in the late 40s, early 50, they were working with a company called Traxon. And Traxon is the one who had developed the name Traxcavator. And Caterpillar bought Traxon at some point, I can't remember what year, but they were con they were transitioning from cable driven loaders over to fully hydraulic ones and the number six shovel was one of the very first they made it from about 1951 to about 1952 and that's it they did not make them after that they transitioned at that point from the number six shovel and i think there might have been a a four and an eight i don't remember for sure i have to look but they then went to the 933, the 955, and the 977. And Old Red is from that era. He is the first era of the 955. And so this is Old Red's older brother. This is a Caterpillar number six shovel. It's essentially a D6 because, I mean, as you can see, it's got two carrier rollers here. Um, I think it's actually shorter height wise than old red but it's definitely a more stout more well-built beefier machine than old red which is fine whatever i mean i love saving them no matter what they are but man look at that thing wow so it is a pony motor start there's the pony motor right there there's the magneto and I don't know, right down there is where there could be a direct electric sort. I don't know if there is one, we'll have to look. I mean, this machine is in beautiful condition. It's, yeah, got the rustic patina, but it's in a barn, it's covered. Both the exhausts, both the diesel and the pony motor exhausts are covered, which is awesome because both exhausts lead into the diesel engine. The pony motor shares coolant and an intake slash exhaust with the diesel. So Old Red's air intake for the diesel is also the exhaust for the pony motor. So if water was to get down in either one of those pipes, on one side it goes in the intake, on the other side it goes into the exhaust side of the engine. So great to see those are covered. I mean, it looks complete. The, those sprockets, they look like they've had very, very little wear. The upper rollers are in great shape. Can't really see the lower ones too well yet. So the track chain, yeah, it looks awesome. There's some slight wear, no big deal. And it looks like they had this uh, like rubber mat over the tensioning mechanism for the, for the tracks. And I think I saw that on the other side too. Sweet. Yeah, so there's the um, so that's the magneto and that'd be the pony motor clutch right there very very similar to old red there's the governor yeah in a lot of ways I bet you they share some parts quite a bit of parts probably so this would be the air intake for the diesel it's kind of weird it goes piped over here all the way over Yeah, over to there, and cuts over and goes down into the intake. I mean, wow, even the seat cushion is in decent shape. It's missing one of the armrests, but that's okay. Let's see if the, uh, so this should be the throttle. Oh, it's still free. So that's the governor that you hear. I think that's the master clutch. And then these would be your individual track clutches. I don't know what those two do yet. You got your foot pedal clutches and then you got the bucket um, 
operations with those two levers over there. And then these levers here for starting, for engaging the pony motor's clutch with the diesel. I gotta check out that Caterpillar battery box, that's cool. Yeah, there's the battery. Mouse nest in there for sure. Oh, look at that drawbar. That's really cool. You don't see. Wow, it's in beautiful shape too. A lot of machines don't have like any kind of an attachment or the drawbar attached to them. A lot of times you'll see like a winch, but I'm wondering if that cover right there could come off and be able to receive a uh, hydraulic driven winch of some kind. Okay, that must be the fill over there for hydraulic fluid right there. And then we got fuel here. Coolant in that one. Right there. Wow, it's just it's in such amazing shape. Even like these um these little wear brackets. Those things wear down. I mean on old red they're just beat to heck. Every one of these pins looks tight on the loader arm. How oh, wonderful. When they parked it in here, they, they backed it in and then have about a foot of it behind this post. And so that means that when I get it going, I have to figure out how to maybe back up slightly, turn and go out. and. One thing I know about running old machines for the first time is they are not usually <laughs> fast and easy to to maneuver. I don't know, maybe if I have to, I can bring a truck and winch it, winch the whole machine that way some, so I have more of a straight shot. But let's see here. So this is the engine. I've got the fuel, maybe the fuel gauge or the fuel pressure gauge. And then this is the hour meter. Let's see what we got for hours. Let's see. Zero nine two one two. So I'm kind of thinking that this thing has 921.2 hours. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the first number, the zero, would be the thousands. And then we got hundredths, tenths, and then singles. And then there's decimal places. Um, if I remember right on Old Red, because that that hour meter looks identical to Old Red. Even the whole setup, like this is the fuel in right here. That would be coming from the fuel tank right here into the engine. Um, obviously Old Red only has four fuel injectors. This obviously being a six cylinder. Even the, I'll bet you the uh, fuel filters are the same because that's the fuel filter compartment right there. And there's our radiator fan. I mean, everything looks here. I'm wondering if they have the side covers because there'd be two side covers that would go right there and one on the other side. That's about the only thing that I see that's not here. So there's our I'm betting those are oil filters, maybe? Probably. Or is that a... Can't be an alternator, is it? Unless somebody did... There are conversions to make these alternators. All right, first step to any machine that you're gonna work on is making room so you can get to it. So we're gonna clear some stuff out of here. Buddy. Yeah. I found a friend. Hi there. You look like a good dog. You don't have a collar on, so I don't know your name. Are you a boy? 
You're a boy. You're a good boy. Oh, you're gonna sit too? Hi. Good dog. Yeah. Haven't met you yet. What a sweet dog. Good boy. All right, now we can walk all the way around it. Perfect. Uh, she sunk in there. This thing, the bottom of the tracks is probably a good six inches. Not that this really matters right now, because hopefully it'll just drive right out, but I am curious. And I actually see in the tracks here, there's mud and there's uh, holes all in it. And so it's some sort of a wasp. Great. When I got old red, it was carpenter bees in the roof. So got to have something for a machine that's been sitting so long. So I don't know the full history on it yet, but have no fear. I'll find out and I'll tell you all about it. It's like 95 degrees Fahrenheit out here right now. And I don't know why I always pick the hottest times to do this kind of stuff, but here we are. So I spent a little extra time and I cleared this space so I can just back my truck in here, have all the tools that I need, have a spot to sit down, use the, bench, the tailgate as a workbench. So yeah, that's going to be great. Good enough for me. Yeah, that was sunk in their ways too. I can't wait to find out how long it's been sitting. It's gotta be 10 plus years. Yeah, this is the top side, the high side. There's definitely not anywhere near the mud on this side because all the water drained that way, took all the dirt down there and then made that side softer so it sunk. Pretty typical. Some old crappy pallets I'm gonna put down for uh, something to stand on. So this this little hump here was higher on this because both of these pieces on this side of the pallet have that bottom piece. All the rest of them have rotted off from just sitting on the ground. So I flipped it around so that I don't have a trip hazard. All right, we're gonna take off this hood, start checking fluids. Gotta start by removing these mufflers. There we go. I dropped one, but these are the first four bolts I've taken out of this machine and they already have anti-seize on them. That is a great sign. All right, right under here, there's a lever or a little linkage. Pull this down, 
and then it unhooks and there's one more right over there I'm gonna get that and the hood should just lift straight off we got to get it over the, the two exhaust pipes I don't know if I can do this actually now that I see the loader arm is in the way Wunderbar. Well, I'm just gonna put it back on. We'll deal with that later. Well, if you know, is there a way to take it off without cutting a bigger hole or notching something off? I don't really want to do that. I want it to come off the way it should. And yeah, if the bucket was up, this would roll back allowing it to come up because it's not getting right here in this corner and that corner it's hitting this gusset so i guess the other way of doing it would be to remove the exhaust manifold which is one two three four five six bolts maybe i'll soak those down tonight and then when i come back tomorrow we'll we'll try it all right let's start checking fluids this is the coolant. That would be the radiator. And it looks moist in there, but I don't see any standing fluid. And the radiator definitely, I don't know. There's a radiator and it looks like an oil cooler maybe too. For the hydraulic oil, I would assume. So, we'll bring some coolant. Let's see, where's the engine oil dipstick? There it is. So here's engine oil. Oh yeah, black, perfect. It's not even actually all that dirty. That is really, really good. It says check, check with engine running. And it's above full, but Let's see where is it so we're up here but once the engine is running it will drop down so that doesn't smell like there's fuel in it good sign that is definitely a leaking cylinder right there that cylinder's leaking something leaking there let's see what else can we reach here this looks like some sort of transmission dipstick, which is above full. Smells like transmission fluid or hydraulic fluid. If you know what that one is, let me know. I don't have a manual for this yet. I literally have done almost nothing. Yeah, that's probably a transmission because there's a breather. There's a breather right there. The oil dipstick is right here. That's our pony motor right here. And then that's the crankcase breather. We've got the voltage regulator. This is our oil bath filter for the um, pony motor. This is the gas tank for the pony motor. We've got the electric start. It's got an electric start for, this, for the pony motor. Um, dipstick, pony motor should be right in this area. Let's see here. There it is. All right. Oh, baby. That is amazing. The pony motor is right at full. And let's see here. Tastes like Stegosaurus. I'd say probably a Stegosaurus. There might be some Raptor in there but no fuel that is amazing that is a great sign for the pony motor because as everyone is going to tell me about a pony motor you shut the fuel off to kill it and that is what you you don't actually shut the motor off with the switch you turn the fuel off so that it dies so that the fuel doesn't leak down into the crankcase causing it to 
increase the viscosity of the fuel or the oil I mean and what that means is it basically makes it thinner and because it makes it thinner it does not lubricate properly and then it destroys the inside of the pony motor and so I have a little experience with pony motors I am no squash 253 but you know I have used them so and I have one so that's great oils where it should be um let's look at okay right right there that's our fuel bowl for the pony motor it looks dry and empty looks like there's some sediment in it so i don't have any gasoline today so we're not going to be able to try and start it but i can bring some Let's check the fuel tank itself. Right, let's see if uh, there's any fuel or anything in it. There we go. That has not been opened in a long time. I could not do it by hand. Ooh, there's a little pressure there. Actually, there's fuel in there. I'm sure that's nasty and probably all gunked up, but the inside of the cap doesn't look bad. So that's a good sign. All right, so that's all we can check on the pony motor. I don't know what else, where all the other dipsticks are yet. So if you know, leave a comment below, let me know. If you've worked on these old machines and you have ever run a, a Caterpillar number six shovel, what should I be looking at? What should I be thinking about trying to take care of before I start it up, before I move it? Um, because, I mean, if there's some seal or some rubber bushing or rubber uh, O-ring or something that I can take care of before I ruin something, let me know. Definitely leave a comment. Um, let's see, what else do we have that we can check? Let's check the hydraulic oil in the back and the fuel for the diesel. I love these old, oh, this is loose. I thought it was tight. I didn't even, huh, cool. I love these old uh, cat fuel tanks. The caps always say, buy clean fuel, keep it clean. So they must have had a problem at some point. Now the filter screen is not nasty and the stick says we've got somewhere in the 30 gallon range maybe well that's good if a diesel is stored with its fuel it's so much better right? all right clean the stick our fuel level is right here so right there you can read 35. So we've got 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 20, 15, 10. So these are probably in gallons. And so the we're right about there. So it looks like it does about 50 gallon tank and it's got about 30, I'd say 38 maybe. So, and it smells old, but I'm betting it'll run on it. And the filter screen does not look ridiculously all gummed up or anything. Sure. Um, I do have some fresh diesel. I am gonna put some, some stabilizer in it and we'll see what happens. All right, I can't get that one by hand. Let's see if we tippy tap method works. Yep. Looks like there's a couple flats on there for maybe a wrench. Well, that's not where the dipstick is. Oh, I see fluid. It's there's probably fluid up to here. Yeah. Yeah, it's clean. Smells good. 
That fluid is literally right there at that tank. So that's another great sign. That means it's not just, it hasn't been just sitting here leaking for years. If you have a need for a jumper pack, I am telling you, the jump and carry ones are built over and above everything else. Because I, I don't want to say I abuse them because I really do take care of them, but I use them hard. And I've got a few of these jump and carry 1224s. Wouldn't be without them. So we're going to hook one of these up. The pony motor, even though I know, I know it's a six volt system, but it'll be fine. 12 volts short, short term. And we're going to bump it over. All right, 12 volts engaged. All right, let's see if this pony motor will even fire up. Let's see, I think we go to on there and push the button. Oh, heck yes. Awesome. I gotta remember which one of these is throttle and which one of these is choke. Looks like they're both free. So if you want to remind me, the top one or the bottom one, which is choke and which is uh, the throttle, or the, yeah, throttle. And then we've got our gauges down here for the diesel, but that actually sounds really healthy. The starter, it's growling a little bit, but the motor, It sounds good. Okay, let's let's get a little ether and fire it in and see if we can get it to pop. And then we'll know if we have spark. All right, our ether, spray it right up in that area where the air comes in. And I'm gonna reach out and push the button. Nope, not firing. So it is probably something in the magneto, I would guess. So we'll dive into that. Probably pull the plugs, check those, and then go through the fueling system. I hope we don't have to tear the carburetor apart, but I guess if we do, we do. I dug the front of the blade out. I wanted to see how good a condition it's in. It looks awesome. It looks like it's had some teeth shanks that looks like they bolt onto two of the bolts in each spot they were removed at some point i might see if they have those because i would like to at least have them if they've got them but yeah so far we've got fuel in it hydraulic oil seems full the pony motor seems like it's in pretty good shape it's healthy it sounds nice no spark yet lots of diesel in it there is gas in it i mean i don't know not sure why this thing's parked, but I'm gonna go find out. I'll be right back. Okay, what do you think? 1951, maybe 1952, Caterpillar number six shovel. Big old monster. And I am so pumped that we were able to get it from this family and save it. And so I want to know your thoughts on the name. What do you want to call it? Uh, I mean, we've got Old Red, I've got a lot of other machines still, but I love your input, I love your advice. You know, again, back to this machine. There were not a lot of these made because they made them from like 51 to 52, I think maybe a little bit later, but they switched over to the 955, the 933, 955, and 977 pretty quickly in the 50s. And so, I don't know, is this a rare machine? From what the research I've done, it is pretty rare. So I am totally excited to be able to save it and honestly put it back to work. So I want to know any of you that have ever run this machine or know what I should be looking for, what we're going to do with this video series is going to be a little different. Um, we're going to basically every day that I'm out here, I'm going to create a video of the progress on that project. And then I'm going to post that. They're probably going to be shorter videos than the normal, 
Um, but I want to see if that's the kind of content that you would enjoy because one of the biggest things with a lot of the other videos and content that I'm creating is it takes a lot of time. I have a lot of videos con like filmed but not edited. And so this might be something I can do faster if I just edit that footage from that day. Um, because some of my videos, it's footage from weeks of work. And so let's just try it. If you guys enjoy it, let me know in the comments. Tell me you like the, the style and we'll keep at it. But for today, we've checked it out. We found it. And I'll tell you a little story about the machine. So the farm that it's on, they farm and used to have cattle and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but they farm corn beans currently, and I don't believe they have cattle anymore. But Grandpa, who basically last used this machine, he was out pushing trees, and this machine has no rollover protection or, you know, like canopy. And so Grandpa pushed a tree over, it fell extremely close, scared the heck out of him. And about 12, 14 years ago or so, he backed this thing in here, parked it, and never ran it again. He's like, nope, I'm done, and I'm not using it. So from all the things that I've been told, there was nothing wrong with it when it got parked. And so there shouldn't be anything major wrong with it now. But obviously, any machine sitting for a long period of time is not good on it. So we're going to kind of address those things as we go. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. It's got the amazing Caterpillar nostalgia, you know, the look, the, you know, what built Caterpillar. And so that's what I love about it. I love saving old machines. And if you follow the channel for any length of time, you already know that. So leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the platform, the style of, of this video. Let me know your thoughts on the name. And if you know anything about these machines that I should be looking for, definitely let me know. So yeah, thank you for basically making it possible to save old machines that have been neglected and abused and forgotten like this one. You know, I, I truly enjoy it. I love working on them. I love getting them running. I love running them, operating them. So, you know, you guys are as much a part of this channel as I am. I love your feedback. I try my best to reply to as many con comments as possible, but the channel has grown to the point where it is very hard to respond to the number of comments that I get. But don't take that as a, I am not appreciative. I read every single one of them, and I truly appreciate your support. And with this one, definitely stay tuned, because once we get this machine done, there's two more machines on this property that we will be re recovering. I'll just tell you this. Another one is a Caterpillar, and the other one is an Alice Chalmers. So both of those will also be a series on this channel. So if you enjoy this kind of content and getting old machines that have been sitting for a long time running, stick around. I got a few more for you. So you guys have a great one. And I truly, truly appreciate your support. Have a great day.